Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bass Guitar Build Series. It is quite a special day today because one, I'm wearing shorts. So no taking the mick of my pale legs because I haven't had a chance to get any of that sweet vitamin D yet this summer. And two, we might be getting the body glue together. We might be, I don't really know. Um, yeah, let's see. So I know that in one of the last episodes, I was in quite a um, predicament as to whether to glue the body up before working out what was going on with the headstock up here. Because if I stuck this entire body together and then put the Buckeye Burr on top, I wasn't really sure if there would be enough excess to cut off and then stick on up the headstock up here. But even if there was enough material to stick up here, what I would need to do is reduce this down by five millimeters in order to stick the Buckeye Bear on top. And my other concern would be that this body would be very cumbersome to then get on the bandsaw and resaw this down. But in reality, by the time this is all glued together, uh, pretend it is glued, that is pretty easy to get on the bandsaw still. There's loads of clearance under this neck, so I can't really complain about that very much. So what I'm saying is the worst thing that can happen here is that I glue the Buckeye on and then it's a little bit more difficult to resaw this down five millimeters in order to stick the excess Buckeye on there. It's really not that much of an issue, so we're gonna get this glued together. But first, one thing I'm worrying about is these bodies, when they're gluing together, kind of like slipping all over the place. Now, I don't have access to a domino here. I had one at Rikertwood, but I don't here. And a biscuit jointer, don't have one here either. But what I do have is an abundance of wooden dowels. So I'm gonna use these to locate the body blanks up to the neck. And then when I glue it together, they're less likely to shift around because in order for this Buckeye to line up, these need to be glued together in exactly the position that was intended. So firstly, let's just separate this. This body blank kind of has a dowel going on, which was sort of my inspiration for this, I suppose. But let's get these out and flip her over. Damn, I don't actually know where they're lining up. <laughs> Back over. Right, I think the most sensible way to do this would be to clamp them together. So in terms of locations for these dowels, we're only going to be using like little six millimeter ones, but I need to be wary of where this is going to be shaped. So I know from here, all under here, that is going to be scooped back. So in reality, I don't want any in this area here. Every 100 mil, I think would be, yeah, not sensible. Plus a little 50 there. Damn, camera tripods in the way. And then those need to be squared down the body blanks and also mark engaged in place. If you want to know where to buy this phone, I've put links to it in the description to an Amazon sellers page. Let's put them back so this workbench doesn't get as messy as it always seems to. And then we will square these little lines down the sides. Now in terms of the up and down location, we'll get a marking gauge referenced from the back of the guitar because that's going to be the flat surface for now. All right, and then we'll get my electrical cable over for the mains drill. Ah, uh, the perils of being in a small workshop. Then six millimeter drill bit plus, uh, what am I looking for? What was I looking for? Drill bit stops. Now, where did I put this? Ha, lovely. Let's get the old stop collar on there and make sure it's going to go down just over the depth of half of a dowel. All right, now let's make them a little bit more prominent with the old pokey tool and drill them out. Didn't drill the ones this side of the neck, did I? It most certainly holds. So we'll get a feel, oh my God. I am not used to a six string neck. That is huge. I hope I haven't accidentally made this a seven string width. I'm sure along the line, it would be very possible for me to have measured this wrong. So in regards to the glue for this, probably just gonna go for standard Type Bond 3, I think. Uh, cast, could do cast, nah, there's no need for cast, come on. Type Bond 3. I'm just quickly going to mask off the internal corners of 
this crack we've got going on here because we don't want any glue drying in there because that's going to be very difficult to get access to. Right, and then while that is, oh my lord, <sighs> while that is drying, we're going to focus on the Buckeye Burr so that, <sighs> let me put this down before I talk to you. While that is drying, we're going to focus on the Buckeye Burr and get it flat, sanded and everything so that immediately tomorrow, once that is dried, we can stick it on. Okay, I'm not going to lie, cleaning up that Buckeye I thought would be a lot more difficult than what it actually was. I was expecting it to tear out and just like, I would need cabinet scrapers and everything to clean it up, but it planed just fine. It's perfectly flat now. So um, I don't really know what else to do. Guitar's gluing up. The Buckeye is flat. Um, I feel like this episode's a bit of a waste if I don't do something else. Let's get this back up here. <sighs> I could get the tape out of here. That's a five second job. Welcome to episode whatever it is where we watch Matt pick tape out of a crack. Sounds like my kind of episode. Right, one last ditch attempt to find something to do before ending this episode is the scoop on the headstock. I'm only going to mark it out for now because again, I'm going to be sticking the Buckeye on here, possibly. So if I shape it and then find that I need to stick it on, there's going to be complications with that. So we're literally just going to mark it out. Um, so... <laughs> Well then guys, I think um, that might be all I can do this episode because this is all gluing up. The Buckeye, like this. Nah, sorry, I, I couldn't end it that early for you. We're now on day two, but we're gonna do two days in one episode. I've actually just finished filming my how to chisel video, which may be released or may not be released. My life isn't that organized to know which order I'm releasing them in, but I have also taken this out the clamps and, oh, yes. Right, so I know my intention was to attach the headstock today, but I forgot to draw it last night. So we're not gonna do that, but we can work on getting this body flat and ready to join the Buckeye Burr to the top. I suspect this is going to be no easy task because while the dowels should have kept these bodies in line, there's always the opportunity for things to not go quite as intended. Okay, so now that is lovely and flat, I can start thinking about attaching the Buckeye. One thing I'm worried about this is getting it to fit perfectly around this neck because we've got a taper to it to start with and also there's a radius bottom which is at an angle. Now, in reality, I've only really got one attempt to get this spot on with the Buckeye Burr and if I mess it up, then there's gonna be an unsightly gap there and there is obviously no other Buckeye Burr that could possibly replace this. So I'm going to make a negative template of it as practice to start with. And then if all goes to plan, I can then transfer that across to the Buckeye Burr once it is ready to be fitted. What we got down here, I think a little bit of three millimeter MDF should do the trick. I've got a vague idea of how I want to do this. So this template is going to be like this. So we're going to have the negative shape of the neck. So if I flip it round and then I'll put a little mark where the neck is and transfer those up a bit.
Right, so I'm pretty happy with that fit. It's been refined quite considerably for <laughs> quite a long time, but there's a few small gaps under here, but I think that should be okay once I get the Buckeye on there. Again, the visual complexity of that, plus when the finish gets a little bit darker on it, I think that a little gap like what you're seeing here. Oh, what you're not seeing here. Oh, come on. Little tiny gaps like that aren't gonna to be too prominent and I'll be able to refine it on the Buckeye anyway. It's a little bit difficult to do it on this MDF. So now I've happily got that in place, the question is, how the blimmin' hell am I going to locate this on here? Make sure that neck position is correct. Oh, okay, it's gonna take some thinking. Right, I think I've done it. So I put a centre line on the neck there so that I can line it up with the joint on the Buckeye. And also I have put, you can't really see it, but through that little bit there, there's some pink masking tape with a centre line on that. So that is bridged across the uh, split in the neck, centre line drawn on it, and then I can line it up with that little bit on there. Uh, it's not spot on in terms of this knot, which was kind of expected. I knew I'd have to do a little bit of refining. This side's all okay, but in here, just gonna have to finish it off with a gouge again and re-dye it. But it was pretty much what I expected. The first job is just going to be to trace around this. But I'm gonna leave all those markings there for now because when I cut the socket out of here, no guarantees that's gonna line up again. The lines in here are just to allow me to realign this top if it should slip. So now the question is, whereabouts does this sit on the Buckeye? Well, I can see through this knot here, the neck is somewhere around there or along that line somewhere. Uh, so if I go from this side, let's see. It's like bang on the corner of that knot. And as for this side, uh, sort of on that line there. Where's it start here? Out there. That's the line of the neck. Let's see if I give myself a little marking on this fretboard where this buckeye ends. Move that out of the way. So from that point, the end of the neck is 49 millimeters. So from here, 49 mil down. So then in theory, when I put this on, it should line up with those two marks. Yeah, it seems to. Okay. Right, let's start cutting this out. Right, there we go. It's, it holds itself on there, so that's a good start. But before I glue it on, I need to stabilize this Buckeye Burr, which is something I have never done before. So that is where the next episode will start. I will see you then.